I find the world a bitter and complicated place, and it seems to feel the same way about me. This is Paul Giamatti, the everyman actor known for his eclectic performances and projects like Sideways, Cinderella Man, Billions, and he's been nominated for an Oscar for playing curmudgeonly history professor Paul Hunnam in The Holdovers. I can't fail this class. Oh, don't sell yourself short, Mr. Coates. I truly believe that you can. One of Paul's first film roles came when he was just 24 years old in the mystery romance Past Midnight, as a farmhand with an intellectual disability who helps sort out an old homicide case. And, and, and you can go to hell if you swear on the Bible and it ain't the truth. But his first real big break came in 1997 when he played Kenny, an obnoxious producer at WNBC Radio who butts heads with shock jock radio personality Howard Stern in private parts. WNBC. You hear that kind of lift? NBC. Suddenly, Paul was everywhere, directing the control room in The Truman Show, fighting the good fight in Saving Private Ryan, portraying Bob Zamuda, real-life comedy partner to Andy Kaufman and overall agent of chaos in Man on the Moon. <laughs> and in several interviews, he said how excited he was to play an ape in Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes. Take it easy, little fella. I'm not gonna hurt ya. And he went so over the top as Marty Wolf, the sleazy Hollywood producer who gets his comeuppance after stealing a kid's essay to make a movie in Big Fat Liar. Oh my God! And can we just take a moment to appreciate his dance moves? After Paul's blue period, he had a string of critically acclaimed roles. He starred as controversial underground comic book writer Harvey P. Carr in the biographical film American Splendor. You know, ordinary life is pretty complex stuff. He had his first collaboration with The Holdovers director Alexander Payne as failed novelist and wine snob Miles in Sideways. There's a just a flutter of like a, like a nutty Edom cheese. And he garnered his first Oscar nomination for playing loyal boxing manager Joe Gould in Cinderella Man. And then slip inside of there and shorten up the punches, right? Shorten them up, that's your turf! He won an Emmy and a Golden Globe thanks to his passionate performance chronicling the life of founding father and the second president of the United States, John Adams, in the miniseries John Adams. And liberty will reign in America! He garnered Globe and Emmy nominations for navigating the 2008 financial crisis as chairman of the Federal Reserve Ben Bernanke in Too Big to Fail, and he won a second Golden Globe for playing the endearing yet flawed television producer Barney Panofsky reflecting on his past in Barney's version. Have I ever given up when it comes to you? Paul continued to be a scene stealer in film after film, playing a villain in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and unscrupulously managing NWA in Straight Outta Compton. Then, for the first time, he became a series regular on a TV show when he played Chuck Rhodes, a ruthless prosecutor trying to bring down a corrupt hedge fund manager in billions. You know, what some people call anti-business is actually anti-corruption. What some people claim is abuse of power is actually holding abusers accountable. And after joining the cast of the Spanish horror series 30 Coins as mysterious villain Christian Barbo, he's garnered his second Oscar nomination for playing Paul Hunnam, a pompous history professor at a prep school who learns to be a little less of a jerk after forming some unlikely bonds in the comedy drama The Holdovers. To my two unlikely companions on this snowy island and to our absent friends and family. Since the late 90s, Paul Giamatti has enthusiastically and relentlessly honed his craft as an actor, never afraid to go too far. When he's not chewing the scenery as a villain, he's the unassuming everyman that we can all root for. 